What is the Wheel of Time? Who are the Aes Sedai and what is the Dragon Reborn? Let's take a look at the world of the Wheel of Time. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. If you'd like to see more videos about great fantasy stories like The Wheel of Time, The Lord of the Rings, A Song of Ice and Fire and The Witcher, please click on the subscribe button in the bottom right of your screen and click on the bell icon. The Wheel of Time is a 14 book long epic high fantasy series by Robert Jordan, with the last three volumes of the series completed by Brandon Sanderson after Robert Jordan's sad death in 2007. At the time of recording this, over 90 million Wheel of Time books have been sold worldwide, making it one of the most popular and widely read epic fantasy series ever. It is also now a major TV series on Amazon Prime. As with all adaptations, there are some differences between page and screen, but in this video you'll find an introduction to both worlds with no spoilers. The Wheel of Time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one age, called the Third Age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past, a wind rose in the mountains of mist. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the Wheel of Time but it was a beginning. Thus starts The Eye of the World, the first book of The Wheel of Time, and it is a good place to start here, as this concept of time as a wheel is a central one through the story. Time itself, we're told, is like a great loom with a seven-spoked wheel. The thread used is people's lives, and what emerges is the pattern, the weave. This isn't just interesting background, though. The fact that time is like a wheel has a real impact on the story, because it means that people's lives are predetermined. Everyone is just playing their own part in the great pattern woven by the wheel. A common phrase used in the books is, the wheel weaves as the wheel wills. In other words, whatever will be, will be. The exception here are those rare people known as the Tarviran. These are individuals who are not bound by the pattern and instead shape it and change it. Taken at a higher level still, they are the wheel itself correcting the pattern when it starts to go wrong, but as far as we are concerned, it means that these are the people who shake up things in history, changing people's lives. Civilizations can rise and fall because of what they do. We discover early on in the story that there is more than one Tarviran in the Wheel of Time, which is probably a good thing. The predetermined path of everyone's lives is about to be shaken up. Simply put, where the Tarviran go, things happen. The other couple of important things to note here about time being a wheel is that, of course, it means that history repeats itself, and people repeat themselves. Reincarnation is a real thing in this world. Important people who do important things in ages past are reborn and will do similar important things in this age. The most important example here is the dragon, the champion of light against the Dark One. We'll come back to talk about him again in a moment. The final concept it's important to know before we get into the world itself is that the turning of the Wheel of Time is powered by magic, or the one power emanating from the true source, as it is known. Those gifted or skilled in magic can reach out and channel this one power. It's rare and dangerous, so you generally need to be taught how to harness it properly, but when you do, you can perform magic. The big snag in all this is that the true source is split into two parts. Women use the part known as Sidar, and men the part known as Sidene, the two halves of magic working eternally together and against each other to power the Wheel of Time. But Sidene, the male half, is, we're told, fouled by the touch of the Dark One, like water with a thin slick of rancid oil floating on top. The water is still pure, but it cannot be touched without touching the foulness. Only Sidar is still safe to be used. In practice, this seems to mean that a male channeler accessing magic is faced with it being like a raging torrent to master, and using it will corrupt him and turn him mad. 
For women, it is like a calm river that needs to be guided and persuaded to your will. So understandably, a culture has developed where male channelers are hunted down and gentled, the process of cutting them off from the one power, whereas women with the gift are identified and trained to be magic users. This distinction between male and female is a central part of Robert Jordan's world, and it will be interesting to see how they handle it on the TV show. In practical terms, it means that many of the societies and cultures we come across are matriarchal or female-led, including the small Two Rivers community where the story starts with its women's circle, the hereditary queendom of Andor, and of course the Aes Sedai magic users. The Aes Sedai are probably the most powerful organisation in the world of the Wheel of Time. It is they who hunt down male channelers for gentling and train and authorise female channelers as members of their order. They are known, feared and respected across the continent. Based in the city of Tar Valen, they are ruled by the Armelin Seat and divide themselves into seven orders or arjas based on colours and with distinctive aims and ethos for each arja. The Red focus on eliminating magical wrongdoing, hunting down male channelers and any female channelers challenging the rule of Tar Valen. Grey is about politics and diplomacy, brown about knowledge and research, green are more warlike, yellow are great healers, blue fight for righteous and just causes, and white are about debate and philosophy. There are also rumours about a secretive black Arja, followers of the Dark One, but those are surely just rumours. There's a lot more that can be said about the Aes Sedai. They play a large role in the story, but probably the most important are that some have access to Angreal, magical items to help them focus and boost their channeling, and some also have warders bonded to them. Warders are bodyguards, but so much more than that. Being bonded to the Aes Sedai creates a connection between them. They can sense where each other are, as well as their general well-being. And the warder is gifted increased strength, endurance, healing, and so on. It's best not to cross a warder. Outside the Aes Sedai, the Wheel of Time has a rich and varied patchwork of kingdoms, cultures, and civilizations. You don't need to know all of these before diving into the story, but it's worth noting that the vast majority of the world we will travel in will be human. There are city dwellers, places like Camelin, Tarvalon, and Tyr, the desert-dwelling Aeel, and the more martial Borderlanders, and so on. One other organisation to be aware of is the Children of the Light, or the White Cloaks as they are sometimes known. This is an independent military organisation devoted to fighting evil and corruption wherever they see it. They are zealous, shall we say, and are always on the lookout for dark friends. Which brings us to the great enemy in all of this, the Dark One. The great evil bringing death, destruction, chaos and all manner of bad things. He was imprisoned by the creator at the start of time into another dimension, but since then has been seeking to break free, destroy the wheel itself and create a new world of his own dark design. He is, needless to say, the big baddie in all of this series, although he primarily acts through his underlings. Dark friends, humans who secretly worship him, Trollocs, half-beast, half-man warriors, think orcs, they're the foot soldiers of the Dark Army, Murdral, also known as Fades or Half-Men, white-skinned, eyeless captains of the Trollocs, Drakar, soul-sucking bat-humans, and most scary of all, the Forsaken, ancient magical channelers who supported the Dark One in a previous age and were imprisoned with him. So let's tie all of this together to set the scene for the story of the Wheel of Time. Our entry point is Moiraine Damadred, an Aes Sedai of the Blue Arja. She has set out with her warder, Lan, on a mission, unknown to most of the rest of the Aes Sedai, to find the Dragon Reborn. The Dragon Reborn is the reincarnation of the Dragon, the great hero who has defeated the Dark One's plans in previous turns of the wheel. She is doing this because of a prophecy that the Dragon Reborn has been reborn at a certain time, and because the bonds that keep the Dark One imprisoned 
seem to be weakening. Strange things are happening. Chaos and darkness are starting to drip into the world. Men are cropping up across the land, capable of touching Sidene and claiming to be the Dragon Reborn. They aren't, but the Dark One's forces are moving again. Moiraine reaches Emmons Field in the two rivers, a quiet backwater, though one with a storied past, and finds three young men, all of the right age to fulfil the prophecy, and two young women with strange talents, perhaps magical. All seems quiet, but there have been sightings of a mysterious figure dressed all in black, and are those the sounds of Trollocs in the hills? Emmons Field is no longer a safe place, but outside in the wider world there are even greater dangers. The Aes Sedai and the Children of the Light will be hunting the Dragon Reborn. Dark Friends and Trollocs will never give up. Events will twist and turn around the Tarviran. Nations will clash. Prophecies will burn. And the Dragon Reborn will touch Sidene, battling madness and fate itself. And the Dark One lies waiting to face him, as he has in the last age, and the age before that. The wheel of time keeps turning. If you'd like to see more videos like this, not just about the wheel of time, but also The Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones or The Witcher, breakdowns, histories, theories and explanations, please click on one of the links appearing on your screen now, or the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.